And so now, having thought about that first day of creation, we're going to spend some time just thinking about the world in its present state. I have permission from my owner books to share with you a meditation from John, by John Bell from this book, He Was in the World. It's entitled, On the Eighth Day. It's really uh, designed to be read by two or three voices, but I hope that the meaning will still come across clearly as I read. On the eighth day. After the making of heaven and earth, and after the time of resting, and after the word had returned from the flesh, and after the spirit sending, God gazed in love over creation, and behold, the world had lost its intended form, and thick darkness brooded everywhere. On the eighth day, God looked on humanity, and humanity was in a mess, emaciated by hunger, bloated by excess, maimed by war, blinded by bigotry. The people of earth lurched towards the abyss. Women demeaned and exploited, men turned brute by their basest desires, no longer bore their creator's image. And God said, do they not remember how I lifted them like children to my cheek? Have they now forgotten that I have written their name on my hands? This is not good. I call on the evening and I call on the morning to witness my displeasure and I long for a different day. On the ninth day, God looked at the creatures of earth and the creatures of earth were in a mess. The fish of the sea were bloated with cancers. The birds of the air were swaddled in oil. The beasts of the wild were hunted as trophies. The beasts of the field were imprisoned in factories. Animals everywhere fell prey to experiment, tortured and tested behind the smoke screen of science. And God said, What shall become of the humble donkey, the gentle beast which carried my son? What shall become of the graceful swallow which built its nest in the eaves of my house? This is not good. I call on the evening and I call on the morning to witness my displeasure and I long for a different day. On the tenth day, God looked at the sky and the sky was in a mess. The sun, once Earth's friend, had become a great danger, threatening the world through a peppered ozone layer. The stars, which once spoke of the harmony of heaven, now witnessed with horror the militarisation of the galaxy. And God said, Does humankind no longer lift up its eyes and wonder? Must Earth destroy the tapestry my hands are still embroidering? This is not good. I call on the evening and I call on the morning to witness my displeasure and I long for a different day. On the eleventh day, God looked at the fertile earth and the fertile earth was in a mess. Fields which should have fed the hungry grew cash crops for civilised cravings. Pastures had become barren through constant overgrazing. Rainforests had vanished to pay off debt and interest. Fruit and grain were suspect, were prone to overspraying. Trees were scabbed and wilted through lack of healthy air. And God said, Where are the lilies of the field, arrayed in majestic splendour? How safe are the ears of corn my son once picked on a Sabbath? This is not good. I call on the evening and I call on the morning to witness my displeasure and I long for a different day. On the twelfth day, God looked at the land and sea and the land and sea were in a mess. Contaminated by waste, debilitated by detergents, the gentle waves heaved with hideous terror. The ground, fouled with fertiliser, had lost its inherent goodness, and tainted by nuclear fallout, deserts glistened with living death. And God said, How can the valleys sing with joy? How can the seas roar in triumph? How can the mountains clap their hands if nature is bereaved? This is not good. 
I call on the evening and I call on the morning to witness my displeasure and I long for a different day. On the thirteenth day, God looked at light and darkness and light and darkness were in a mess. Truth was in exile, displaced by lies and rumour. Imperialism masqueraded as justice. Intervention wore the cloak of welfare. Cheap pleasure stole the mantle of love. And the religion of the privileged was proclaimed heir to the throne of the saviour of the poor. And God said, Who can believe what I have seen? To whom did I think I had revealed my power? This is not good. I call on the evening and I call on the morning to witness my displeasure and I long for a different day. On the fourteenth day, God looked away from the world, which was born out of love and crafted with beauty, and God wept. When the time of the weeping was done, God said, I have kept faith with my children on earth. I have trusted them to be stewards of the land and guardians of its creatures. I promised them nature's kindly gifts as long as they lived with justice. I promised them every spiritual gift as long as they cared for creation. And then... Then when I saw they had lost their way and lived and languished far from me, I sent my son to save the world and bring my people home. O children of earth, you have witnessed my love. Do you now want to witness my anger? In silence I will wait. I will watch and I will wait. Choose now, my sons and daughters. What shall brood over you? Thick darkness or the Holy Spirit? We hold a moment's silence before we come to our prayer of confession. We say together, Mighty Creator, you made us the pinnacle of your masterpiece to reflect your love, mercy and compassion. We bow our heads in sorrow, for we have fallen far short of our potential. We have failed to demonstrate your love and care for each other and the world. We have not reflected your mercy and forgiveness. We have not always worshipped you in spirit and truth. Creator, forgive us and lift us up so that we might reflect more clearly your character. Amen. So may the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.